Welcome to Worship La Casa. My name is Stacey Medina and I'm the director at Children's Ministry. Did you know that at 9.15 and at 10.30, many of our kids are in the Ignite Room with me and Miss Heather. We have so much fun over there from Bible stories to worship with the Keegan family to just experiencing the amazingness of God together. We have so much fun. Each month, we have a special verse of the month. And here's a video of one of our sweet little ones who shared it with me just last week. So I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 14. We are so blessed with the amazing volunteers here at Ignite Kids, and we truly couldn't do it without them. We can't wait to have kids join us of all ages to join in on the fun, and we look forward to seeing them every single week. We had our daddy-daughter dance on Friday, February 10th, and it was a great night for all. With over 220 dads and daughters, they danced the night away, made a special craft together, ate ice cream together, and of course, had a blast dancing to all the amazing music from our DJ, Anthony. It was a great time for all, and I can't wait for you to see all the amazing pictures of this great event. We are so glad that you are here today at La Casa de Cristo. Now, let's get ready to worship. Please stand as you are able for our opening hymn.
we welcome you today if you are in the sanctuary. We're glad you're here, but also if you are worshiping with us online, welcome. I hope you enjoy our service. And now we'll begin with our greeting, our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sins in this time of silence. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you for the sake of the world you so love. Forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name, amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. remain standing as we recite together the Nicene Creed as seen on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son are is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. As you heard in the Stay Connected, we have our Ignite Children's Ministry that goes on during this hour and 10.30, but if we have children here with us in worship, I'd invite them to come up with me at this time for our children's message. And so if you want to come on down, join me up here at front. I would love it. Okay, we got a couple. Come on down while they're coming down. We also want to note that if you're uh, worshiping with us for the first time today or new with us, we'd love for you to fill out the connection card that's in your pew. Uh, that's our way of greeting you, and we can share with you our news electronically and share in that. Grab a seat, guys. All right. How are we doing today? Come on up. Sometimes we, uh, we need to hear things in a new way. So in a few minutes, you're going to hear a reading from the Bible about this story, but I'm going to kind of update it in a modern way, okay? I want you to imagine this, okay? A couple months ago, you guys all loaned me, all right? All of you here this morning, you pulled your resources, you loaned me 20 bucks, all right? Around Christmas time, okay? Now, you come up to me after church today and you say, Pastor Jeff, where's that 20 bucks that you owe me, and I say, you know what? I'm a little light on cash right now. Um, can I pay you back later? And you go, no problem at all, Pastor Jeff. We know you, we know you're good for it. That's awesome. We're going to uh, give you a little bit more time to pay that money back, and I go, that's awesome. So I leave church, you leave church, and I'm walking out and I see Dr. Peterman, our organist, all right? Now I go up to Dr. Peterman, by the way, don't say anything, but there's only one person on the church staff cheaper than me, and that's Dr. Peterman, all right? <laughs> Now, um, but, you know, a while back, I had lent Dr. Peterman $1, okay? And I see him, and I said, where's my $1, Dr. Peterman? Where is it? Where's my $1? He says, I don't have it. And I get really mad at him. I said, you don't have it. I need that $1. And I call the church police on him, all right? <laughs> Was I being very nice to Dr. Peterman? No. Were you guys being nice to me? Yeah. You know what? This is the way it is with God in our lives. And that's the point of the story. God is so gracious. God is so generous to us. But sometimes we're not always kind to other people. And that's what we're going to hear from in the Bible today and what we do about it. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you are so gracious, that you are so kind, and that you do love us and forgive us. Help us to reflect that when we deal with other people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys and gals for coming up. And as you head back to your seats, let's move out of our seats as we're so able and share God's peace with one another. remain standing for our gospel acclamation.
as found on page 695 in the Pew Bible, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew uh, chapter 18. Then Peter came to Jesus and he asked, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he, his wife, and his children, and all he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Oh, be patient with me, he begged. I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him. He canceled the debt and sent him away. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who had owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and he began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me, I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and he had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went to the, told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me not to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? In his anger, the master turned him over to the jailers to be t tormented, uh, tortured until he could pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat you uh, unless you forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our hymn of the day.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto us from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who also gives us the promised presence of his Holy Spirit. Amen. If you remember nothing else in the coming hours, days, or weeks of what will transpire over the next few minutes, I hope you'll remember this phrase that I heard long ago and has always stuck with me. The thing we most need forgiveness from God for is our own unforgiving nature. The thing we most need forgiveness for is our own unforgiving nature. That's really at the heart of this gospel that was just read for you. It's at the heart of Peter's question to Jesus. How often should I forgive my brother or my sister? And when we think of that, we know automatically that Peter was doing something that we would do. He wants to place a limitation. He wants to place a number. He wants to place a measurement on God's forgiveness. You see in the Jewish Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, it was commonly understood that you only had to forgive your brother or sister three times, and then after that, it was hands off. And in the Greek translation of what we have today in Matthew 18, depending on the manuscript, it's been translated a couple different ways. It's been translated, no, you must not forgive seven times, but 70 times seven, or 490, or 77 times. But the point of this is, Jesus is making a point that it goes far beyond that. He's not saying that when you get to 78 or you get to 491, then you can stop. He's using hyperbole to show us that God's love is unconditional and that Peter hadn't even begun to ask the right question. Asking the right question is always important because we want to also understand the answers. There's a cute story that's told about a, a pastor who asked a question and uh, he shouldn't have asked it in the way that he did. He had a group of very young kids with him and he was teaching them about worship. And he said to the group, why is it important that we are quiet in worship? And some of the kid answered and then he said, why is it important that we're quiet during the pastor's message, during a sermon? And one little girl earnestly and eagerly raised her hand, and with all the innocence of a child, he called on her and said, I know why you have to be quiet during the pastor's message, because people are sleeping, because people are sleeping. <laughs> we have to ask the right questions and also look at the answers. And in response to Peter's question, in response to this question, Jesus gives the answer of the king. And in the ancient currency of the time, the king calls a man before him who owes him the modern day equivalent of $10 million. And you've heard the story, you know that the, the gift is delayed, the gift is forgiven for a period of time. But then this man goes out and he sees Jimmy walking down the street who owes him 20 bucks. And he says, pay up, and he does it and he throws him in the debtor's prison. And of course, the message is that as often as God has given us gratitude, graciousness, mercy, and forgiveness, we often do not do the same with our brothers, with our sisters. So what does all this mean? How do we understand it in light of the gospel? And how do we understand it in light of today? I, I chose this text for today because for 35 years, I've been preaching on Transfiguration Sunday on Jesus, Peter, James, and John going up on the mountain with Moses and Elijah. And I want this Lenten season for all of us to be a literal transfiguration, a transformation of our lives spiritually. As you read the devotion that Pastor Matt has prepared for you, as you gather in small groups or share 
share it with your families or on your own, that we will be spiritually transformed. And this gospel text is the perfect segue for that because it talks to us about the importance of how we treat our brothers and sisters. You see, we put conditions on things. We put limitations as Peter did. It's behind all sorts of sayings that we have with people. I'm done with them. He or she can just go jump in a lake or maybe it's not that blatant and obvious. Maybe it's a slow simmering with someone in our extended family that we can barely tolerate and we say, you know, I'm just done with that person until they come around and grovel to me. I'm not going to go the extra mile for them. But Jesus says something different here. And he holds us to account. And he says, if we cannot, if we cannot forgive as we have been forgiven, then we are embezzlers of God's mercy. We are thieves of God's mercy. And you and I, in this fine sanctuary this day, would never consider ourselves to be embezzlers or thieves, but that's exactly what Jesus is saying to Peter and what he's saying to us when we cannot forgive those who have wronged us. We have embezzled God's mercy. You see... As we worship in this sanctuary today or online, there are 10 million reasons why God should not forgive you or me for all the things that we have done in our lives. Hurtful actions, spiteful words, talking about other people, Or maybe not even uttering those words, but thinking them in our hearts. There's 10 million reasons why God should not forgive us. But he does. And if we then turn around and we walk out of this sanctuary and we hold others to account for the 20 reasons that they may have wronged us, then we have stolen and embezzled God's mercy. You see, this is a tough gospel. It's a difficult gospel. But the answer is given to us to the right question in just a few moments. There's a reason why every few weeks the pastor stands behind the altar and consecrates bread and wine. And there is a reason why he or she distributes communion to us on a regular basis with the words, this is my body, this is my blood, because this is God's answer for us. This will be our Lenten journey as we move towards the cross and the empty tomb. This will be the answer for us. And this is why forgiveness is so important and spiritual transformation and transfiguration in our lives. Transfiguration isn't just what happened on a mountain over 2,000 years ago. It's the call of you and me and our daily lives spiritually to partake in that. And the answer is given. This is my body. This is my blood. Ten million reasons why we have been forgiven. And if we leave this place and stand apart from others and distance others from God's love, and mercy. Then Jesus says, we're thieves. You know, maybe theoretically, we can understand this in the little things in life, in the small slights and infractions that others cause us or that we cause others. But what about the big things? What about the really big things? Well, Scripture says faithful in a little, faithful in a lot. Six years ago, yesterday, the coach of the Phoenix Suns, Monty Williams, was serving as an assistant coach with the Oklahoma City Thunder at the time. When he got the news that his wife, Ingrid, 
had suddenly been killed in a head-on collision on a freeway in Oklahoma as a woman had a dog in the front seat and she wasn't paying attention and drifted across the center line. Not only was his wife killed, but the woman was killed as well. And at the funeral, Monty Williams gave the eulogy for his wife and in this funeral, which was packed with NBA stars and celebrities, including his close friend, Chris Paul, Monty Williams at the end of his eulogy said these profound words which echoed and were an example for so many people. He said this, he said, in closing, I want you to know something, that you all are praying for me and for our children, as you should, as brothers and sisters in Christ. But I want you to know that in our home, there is a saying, a plaque from the book of Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And he said, I want you to remember that there's another family grieving today, the family of the woman who caused the accident. And he said, that woman did not wake up that morning intending to kill another person or lose her own life, but she did. And so he said, I want you to pray for the Donaldson family. And he said, you cannot, you cannot call yourself a Christian. You cannot call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ if we cannot forgive one another. You cannot call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ if we don't forgive. And he said, life's hard. Life is difficult and it's tragic. But let's pay attention to what's important. Could we do that? You see, this is the call of the gospel. And it's a tough gospel. And it's a gospel that holds you and I accountable. Because it's very clear there's consequences if we don't love others as God has loved us. We pray it every weekend. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do we mean it? Or are we embezzlers of God's mercy? As we begin our Lenten journey this coming Wednesday night here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m., it is my hope and my prayer that we will take to heart these words of our Lord. Peter asked, how often should I forgive my brother or sister? Seven times? I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Amen. In just a moment, we'll worship with our morning offering. There will be a musical offering. Our ushers will receive the offering and we can also give electronically. But I also wanna take this moment to thank the congregation for last weekend. There is a, a reason you worship in a Lutheran church. We believe in our heritage and in our beliefs that clergy are neither infallible or inerrant. And so my pick last weekend was wrong for the Super Bowl. <laughs> but the good news is you raised over $3,000 for the Paradise Valley Food Bank. So thanks be to God for that. And thank you for sharing uh, of what God has blessed you with, with those that need it the most. Let us worship at this time with our offering.
please stand? On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, uh, as he taught his disciples, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as the communion servers come forward.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. May the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. <laughs>